Hello, my friends. This is Dr. Diana. It's patient, and I am pretty ill. Finally, my 23andMe results came back. My husband and I had ourselves, our children, and his parents tested. It felt like I was interrupting a Christmas present, you know, when the results came in, only to find out that when the box is open, some assembly is required if you get my drift. Heavens, who knew that you had to be a, a chemist, a statistician, a magician, a, a rocket scientist, you know, to figure this out. At least I thought so. So um, I did have an, an enabler, I am blessed, um, in that my husband sat down and took a day or two to try to work through this. Uh, we really wanted some answers. Now, meanwhile, if you need some help with yours, especially the MTHFR gene, there are some wonderful folks on the Facebook page at prettyill.com who may be able to help you. I'd like to thank Marty, Michelle, and Sherry for all reaching out to offer to help with this. Play your cards right, my friends, and maybe they will help you too, okay? By the way, I think this would be a tremendous job for a Spoonie second career. I know people would pay money for this to figure it out. It's tedious, it's not that difficult once you understand exactly what you're doing, but um, yeah, it takes some time, so think about that. Anyway, um, my husband sent me an email <laughs> with the results, and yes, we do live in the same house, <laughs> and yes, I have been known to actually call my daughter on her cell phone when she is upstairs and I'm downstairs. That is life today, I tell you what. Okay, especially with Spoonies, but I digress. Um, in this 15-page email, it explains everything. Something funny, you know how uh, Google offers to translate foreign languages for you? Well, when I got this email, it said on the top, this page is in Maltese. <laughs> Would you like me to translate it? Oh, I thought that was funny. But RS-180-11331 is 11856378GG. You know, I can understand how they got that. Anyway, first, a ton of people have been on standby to see if anyone in my family has the MTHFR gene, the mother gene, right? Drum roll, we're clear. All of us are clear. Everybody in the family, which actually kind of surprised me because the more I've read, the more I looked at the symptoms, the more I convinced myself that, you know, we had this. We must have had this. Um, no, we don't. So, um, I do think this is a great opportunity for us, though, to learn a few things. I certainly did myself. Um, so, lots of lessons here, but my top three, one, I do think that we should be tested for this gene and for other prothrombotic conditions. Now, you don't need to go to 23andMe to do this, um, although it's kind of fun, I must say. Um, your doctor can order a thrombotic risk panel. LabCorp, for example, offers a good one. And it includes tests such as the dilute prothrombin time, antithrombin activity, protein C functional plasminogen, anticardiolipin antibodies with IgG, blah, blah, blah. Um, the MTHFR mother gene, a DNA analysis, and last but not least, the lupus anticoagulant reflex. And it's good to have this done periodically because we kind of go back and forth. So I wanted to thank Jared for sharing this with me. And I think asking our doctors for a thrombotic risk profile will be so important. Thanks, Jared. Next. As we all know, most of us are suffering. The degrees of suffering vary, but we can reach times of desperation. Am I right? Newsflash. There are doctors out there who are willing to make money on us more than help us. I know that is very discouraging, shocking, and I pray these doctors are in the minority, but I will share my experience with you quickly on one I came across. When my son and I were basically at our worst, we were bed bound. My son lost about 25% of his weight and he started at 66 pounds, okay? Was unable to go to school or even be tutored. He was so ill for three years. We were desperate. He was 10 years old. He was triggered by a virus at the age of eight. So you can imagine how frightened we were. Now there was a doctor who deserves to go on our hall of shame. Do we have a hall of shame? We need a hall of shame. Well, I won't say his name, but if you're in Texas, let me know. <laughs> I'll tell you to avoid, okay? Um, anyway, there was a doctor who convinced us that he thought we, as in all of his patients, unbeknownst to me, 
had methylation issues and needed hundreds of dollars worth of his personally patented supplements and we needed them for a long time. Now do I? If someone says they can cure you, but you have to buy their patented formulations for any condition, bells should be ringing. Now, ours rang, I will confess, but we again were desperate. Well, now we know what he was trying to treat us for, but he never, never bothered to test us for it. MTHFR genetic defect, geez. Oh. So live and learn, obviously. We didn't improve on any of the supplements and my son and I were getting sicker. Fortunately, I realized right about that time that my kids and I were showing signs of hydrocephalus settle, but they were there. So that's when Diamox came to our rescue and the journey to the Driscoll theory began. So not all bad. Finally, another lesson I'd like to say that we all need to be careful too. And you guys are smart, you're savvy, you know this, but when we're really sick, we forget some of these things. Um, we have to be careful of groups that want to run trials on us, but we have to pay for the testing. Bells, ringing, okay? Enough said there. Now, oh, one other thing, it can be easy for us to go down rabbit trails, I think, too, when we're looking for reasons for our symptoms. Some of, of what we find may be red herrings. Is that too many men metaphors in one sense? Um, but that can hide the real source of our problem. So, um, it can be bad because we end up not treating the basic underlying condition. I'm not a huge fan, as you know, of treating conditions symptomatically um, unless I'm absolutely certain that what we're dealing with has no other alternative. I really want to hit the source of what our problems are, right? And then if there's absolutely no alternative, I'm scoping out the clinical trials. I want to know the latest stuff. So you guys are smart. You know all this. It's just a friendly reminder. Reminder. So um, I don't want to see happen to you what happened to me. Um, heaven knows our pennies count, especially when we're living on disability income, right? And scrambling for a clinical trial to help us with answers. Um, so something to keep in mind. Speaking of which, clinical trials coming, working on the team, the dream team, my friends. It's a bit like it's a bit like building the ark, but worse. <laughs> Because attorneys are involved. Huh, no, really, some of my best friends are attorneys, really, it's true. Mm -hmm. But we're working on it, getting closer. I'm so excited. Okay, my friends, until next time, let's continue to change our worlds one brain cell at a time. Gentle hugs to you all. Hello, my friends. This is Dr. Diana. <coughs> okay. Um, it felt like I was unwrapping a Christmas present when we. Good grief. Well, I do think we should be tested. Excuse me. Oh, I think it's okay. And um, one, I learned, learned there's SNPs or SNAPs or SNPs or whatever, and Snipopedia or. Whatever. Oh, 